tapping into. When Chris had his psychotic episode, this is what was happening to him. The marijuana smoke released its active ingredient, THC, which entered his brain, locked onto a cannabinoid receptor and opened the floodgates on a potent neurotransmitter, dopamine. Unlike our natural internal cannabis, which breaks down quickly, the THC stayed there, holding the gate open, flooding the brain with dopamine, right in an area linked with psychosis. This is where uh, dopamine is pumped out into the midbrain. In fact, too much dopamine in this area is called the wind of psychotic fire. Really? Yeah. What a great name. And antipsychotic medications yeah. block dopamine in this region and ameliorate psychotic symptoms. Okay, so, so the mechanism is actually really clear that this is how the cannabis causes psychosis. It is. But if that's true, how come so few cannabis users become psychotic? One third of Australians have tried marijuana, yet only 1% of the population has schizophrenia. Who are the people at risk? The answer, perhaps surprisingly, was discovered in a picturesque corner of South Island, New Zealand. Dunedin is home to one of the world's best longitudinal studies. Since 1972, they've been subjecting a group of a thousand people to a barrage of tests and questions. In 2005, they announced an astonishing discovery a gene for vulnerability to cannabis. Yeah, the gene we looked at is called the catechol-methyltransferase gene, or COMPT for short. And then we looked at that particular gene because we know that it stands out in families whose members have schizophrenia. And what does this COMPT gene do? Well, as it happens, it regulates our old friend, dopamine. Let's say these are the comp genes. This is the good gene, this is the bad gene. Now, everyone gets two, so you could have two good genes, one of each, but if you get two bad genes, well, it seems your ability to regulate dopamine is impaired. Which might not matter unless you smoke cannabis. We found that among adolescents who had used cannabis, on a monthly basis or more, uh, who had the bad version of the gene, their uh, chances of uh, developing psychosis by the mid-20s uh, were increased 11-fold. 11-fold? That's extraordinary. It is. So this explains why uh, the use of cannabis among a, a small group of people has a devastating effect in terms of the likelihood of developing psychosis, but most people remain unharmed or unscathed. We can't know whether Chris has this vulnerability gene or others yet to be discovered because tests aren't available to the public for now. But he did fall into another major at-risk group. He started smoking dope young. I was about 15 and I was having a pretty shitful day to be honest and I just thought, yeah, all right, why not? What's the worst that could happen? And it just all started from there. Yeah, I was just smoking every day, all hours of the day. You know, the only time I'd really go outdoors was to try and score some more dope. Yeah, so. I think one of the most fascinating aspects of the finding was that it, the risk uh, was constrained to the period of adolescence. And that's backed up by a number of international studies. It seems the younger you start, the greater the risk. I think science now tells us that the brain continues to develop over the life course. And there's a period of uh, quite remarkable change that occurs during the adolescent years. Changes in brain architecture and synapse connections being made or lost. So I would just be very wary about putting anything into that milieu, be it alcohol, be it cannabis, be it other substances, at that time of high sensitivity in terms of brain development. After his release from hospital, Chris went straight back to his bad old habits. He had a series of psychotic events over the next two years. Then, aged 18, something gave. I just 
got this sudden rush of pain straight after having a bong just rushed through my head from front to back and yeah it was the most excruciating thing I'd ever felt yeah I didn't link that to the drugs either until every time I had a bong or a joint or whatever I would get that pain again was a nice slowly quit from there those headaches were possibly the luckiest thing that ever happened to him Chris now works at the very hospital he was brought to all those years ago as a mentor to other young people in the state he fortunately was able to leave behind and never another psychotic episode no not one it's amazing really oh it is yeah it just proves that marijuana was the cause of my psychosis yeah since 1998, the number of teenagers using marijuana in the past year has dropped from 35% to 13%. While the scientific verdict was coming in, it seems our young were making their own judgment.